Handling things like hazardous chemicals or specimens requires a great deal of caution. If we don't contain them, hazards can spread and contaminate the things around them, including you and your coworkers. Every day we're called on to handle substances like toxins, corrosives, and carcinogens. We think we know how to protect ourselves, but are we doing all we can? Even tiny amounts of a hazardous material, combined with a few unconscious actions, can spread contamination. Let's take a closer look. The luminescent dye that's been added to this material makes it easy to trace the path of any contamination. As we can see, the dye has been spread from the liquid on the outside of the test tube to the lab worker themselves, and can then be transferred to everything they touch. When it's this easy for contamination to occur, we need to do everything we can to prevent it. This means being very careful with the products we work with and how we handle them. To effectively shield ourselves from contamination, we need to first know about the materials we're working with. So you need to read product labels and safety data sheets before starting to use a substance. These and other references describe the potential hazards presented by the material, and they tell us how to protect ourselves from contamination. As we think about protecting ourselves, we need to consider the four major routes of entry a material has to our bodies. Inhalation, eye contact, skin contact, absorption and injection, and ingestion. We can guard these routes of entry by using a combination of personal protective equipment, PPE, engineering controls, and safe work practices. Let's start with personal protective equipment. It needs to be inspected before you put it on. Replace any items that are ripped or otherwise damaged and make sure you've got a proper fit. At a minimum, you should wear gloves, a lab coat, and safety eyewear. Some operations demand even more protection. For instance, face shields should be worn if there's a danger of chemical splashes to the head, face, and neck area. You need to anticipate the hazards associated with the materials you're working with and talk to your supervisor to make sure that you're using all the PPE that you need to be fully protected. You should also monitor the condition of your protective equipment throughout the day and immediately replace anything that's damaged or that may have become contaminated. Pay special attention to your gloves. Perspiration on the inside and other liquids on the outside can make gloves permeable to the very thing you're trying to prevent, contamination. Change your gloves at least once every two hours or as soon as they become wet. You should also look at how you can use engineering controls to protect against contamination when you're working with hazardous materials. Equipment like splash guards and blast shields can protect your skin and eyes from inadvertent chemical contact. Exhaust hoods and other ventilation devices will keep contaminated fumes and vapors out of your breathing zone. Consult your supervisor about the engineering controls you can use in your lab to limit the spread of contamination. Even with the proper PPE and engineering controls, contamination can still occur if you don't follow safe work practices. To start, this means paying attention to good housekeeping. Keep your work area neat and orderly. Avoid unnecessary clutter. Wherever possible, use small containers. And if you're not using a substance, put it back where it belongs. Any spill should be cleaned up as quickly as possible. Follow proper disposal procedures and decontaminate the spill area. When you're finished with a piece of equipment, make sure that it's cleaned up and decontaminated before you leave for the day. You don't know who might need to use it later. 
If you can't clean glassware immediately, soak it in soap and water. This will cut down on contamination and make cleanup easier. You should plan for the disposal of hazardous or infectious waste before you begin a procedure. Your lab has a written policy on handling this type of waste, so follow it. Be careful what you pour down the drain. The sewer system is not built to handle laboratory chemicals. A mistake in disposal could contaminate the local supply of drinking water and other parts of the environment. Ask your supervisor or safety officer about your lab's disposal procedures. Another problem with contamination is its potential for personal transportation. When you're on a break, off to lunch, or on your way home, it can be easy to take a contaminant with you. Leave notebooks, pencils, and other supplies in the lab. Anything you use in your work should be thought of as being contaminated. Wash your hands thoroughly before leaving your work area. Never wear your PPE or lab coat outside the lab. That can cause real problems. For instance, gloves can leave contaminants on doorknobs, which in turn can contaminate the next person coming through the door. Poor safety practices can also increase the risk of ingesting hazardous materials. Something as simple as taking your lab notebook to lunch could lead to contaminating your sandwich. Of course, this type of problem can also occur inside the lab. Never bring food or drink into your lab area. And don't wash your coffee cup or lunch dishes in the lab sink. The rule of thumb for avoiding ingestion hazards is never mix contaminants with uncontaminated objects or areas. You also need to remember that contaminants move easily from one part of your body to another. So you should avoid nervous habits like rubbing your face or scratching your nose. They can bring hazards too close to your mouth. It's also important to protect the materials that you're working with from contamination. It's all too easy to contaminate a sample with a chemical unknown that can result in a false reading. To prevent the contamination of samples and other materials, keep your work surfaces and equipment clean. Check them before, during, and after your work. Decontaminate all equipment after using it. Be thorough. Follow your lab's established cleaning procedures. Pay special attention to equipment that's shared with other workers. Hot plates and stirrers, for example, tend to collect chemical residues over time. These residues can then contaminate the work that you're doing. When cleaning equipment or your lab area, make sure to use appropriate cleaning methods. Don't use air guns to blow away powder. It could easily contaminate other areas and employees. Carefully blot or sweep up the powder with a dry paper towel and dispose of it properly. Keeping things free from contamination is critical to safe and productive lab operations. Let's review. Know what materials you're dealing with. Don't make assumptions. Wear PPE and dispose of it properly when you're finished. Use the correct engineering controls for the work that you're doing. Maintain good housekeeping practices. And work carefully. Be aware of the substances and equipment you come into contact with. Most importantly, remember that the best way to prevent contamination is to be mindful of those who worked before you and considerate of those who will work after you.